Hello everybody, this is Niklas Huschmidt. Can you see me? <laughs> and this is another game analysis and I'm going to cover my game from the Bundesliga round 13 in which I played against Finnish player Tomi Nivak from the team Werder Bremen. We played against Werder Bremen, Hamburg Werder Bremen, so North Derby as they like to call it. And Tomi Nivak, strong grandmaster, ELO 2580, but he has been above 2600 already he's quite experienced so i was going into the game with the black pieces and you see it from my perspective so let's get started he played d4 i played d5 and i went for the accepted queen's gambit taking on c4 played e3 and i'd actually prepared this line right before the game so i was quite familiar with it e5 now white goes bishop takes c4 takes d4 takes d4 and now bishop d6, knight f3, knight f6. And here recently one line became more fashionable and that's the move queen e2. The old main move is castle. But we went queen e2 and that's exactly what I looked at before the game. So queen e7 and go into the end game here. And now castle. And black had some difficulties to equalize here but I looked at this and it seems that bishop e6 is a good way to play. And he was not familiar with this move, so it already gave me, an, gave me an advantage because he had to spend more time. So he took on e6, and he played rook e1. I think the only other move that can pose black any problems is knight g5, but he played rook e1. And now, I had also looked at this before the game, and knight c6 is the way to go. Black doesn't have to defend the pawn right now. He still took it. He still took the pawn, we'll see what happens then. White can also play differently, let's say knight c3, but now after I've covered the e5 square I can for example protect the pawn of king d7, I could imagine, or also play a move like rook d8 here and I think black should be fine in all lines. So he took on e6 and now rook d8 is happening and white has difficulties defending this pawn and he is underdeveloped here. So here he took a long think, which I was happy to see. He spent at least half an hour, I would say. And he surprised me, he played bishop e3, and I thought it wasn't possible. I expected knight c3, and then I would win back the pawn. And after bishop e3, I wasn't sure if I was going to d6 or to d7. I think both moves are fine. Because white can never take on a7, his bishop will be locked in, and this is just not worth it, he will probably lose it sooner or later. So, this seems completely fine for black. But his move is more ambitious, but also a little bit more risky, I would say. So you play bishop e3, uh, excuse me, with the knight here, play bishop e3. So why did I think it wasn't possible? Because this rook doesn't have any squares. I could have gone, I didn't, I could have gone king d7. And now his rook is left without squares. But I didn't like him sacrificing exchange, rook takes c6, and knight e5 coming next. So if I take with the king, what I would like to do to keep my pawn structure intact, place knight e5, place knight f7 next, and I lose an exchange due to the fork. If I take with the pawn, he'll also play knight e5. And I can stop the fork, but this king feels a little bit unsafe, this pawn might be hanging, and I thought from a practical point of view, this position is easier to play for white, even though black might be better, not sure, but just it doesn't feel good for black. So I decided to see what other options I have, and I played, I played rook f8 in this position. What's the point? Very simple, right? We just looked at the idea. Why wants to go for fork with knight of seven? So I stopped that. I play rook of eight, and my threat is to now go king d7. So if white, he played bishop g5. If white goes knight c3, now I play king d7. And important here, after rook takes c6, I can take with the king and keep my in structure intact. And after knight e5, I just go to b6. d5 check, no problem. Go to a6, and nothing happening here. And black is just better. So he took another very long think. And that's also what I liked about my choice, because he spent more time, and time is really such a valuable resource, not only in life in general, but also in chess. And in the end, he played bishop g5. Of course, which 
can't be what he had in mind earlier, moving his bishop again, but he didn't find anything better. And now I took, oh no, actually I didn't take yet. I want to improve on that, I play king f7 first. So why do I play king f7 first? If I take here, and we have the same variation as in the game, now after knight c3, king f7, he could play rook e1. Whereas if I play king f7 first, then he has to move the rook back. So that's why I played king f7 first in this position. However, it gives white another option, that is to sacrifice the exchange again. He could have done that um, and play this king e6. And now not take on c6 because of rook d6, but knight c3. And actually this is not too clear. This is really not too clear, but apparently black should be a little bit better after c5 here. But of course you gotta calculate this very carefully, rook e1 and so on, so not that simple. Okay, but he played he played the rook back in this position, played rook e2. Now I take, 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 knight c3, and rook fd8, that was pretty obvious, bring the rook there. And now he played bishop e3. I expected, I expected rook e1, but okay, I can just play bishop b4, for example, I think. Or something else, rook d7, many options. I mean, in general, positions about equal, it feels a little bit more pleasant to play for black. So you played bishop e3, rook d3, again, he can't have any of those pawns, he would just lose pieces. He went h3, now I go bishop b4. And turns out this knight doesn't really have any good squares. If you go knight b5, for example, I can go c6. And you don't want to take on a7, the knight will be trapped, and then where else to go? So he had to go rook c1, which he did, but now that allows me to spoil his pawn structure a little bit by going bishop takes c3. Pawn takes. And now I played b6 to have this idea of c5 because I want to challenge this bishop on d4, otherwise the bishop would be very well placed on d4. So now he played king of one. And I could have gone c5 here actually, that's fine. But I played knight e4 instead because I want to see how he deals with this pawn. And he played bishop d4, which I didn't expect. I thought he, would, he needs to play rook ec2 maybe. But he played bishop d4 and what I had actually missed Instead of the knight d2 check, that's what I had planned, but I didn't, play, uh, I didn't play it. King e1, knight c4, that was my plan, going c5 next. It looks very strong, right? With the knight and c4. But here, white has this move, rook e4. And now if c5, white can just take, because the knight is attacked. And turns out I don't have a good way to proceed here. If I go b5, protecting the knight, but now c5 as an option disappears. So I didn't like this, and I played something else. I played rook e8, and first I thought I couldn't play this because of bishop takes g7. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And indeed, after king takes g7, I think uh, white is doing okay. He wins back to peace, and it's doing good. Knight e2, rook takes d2. But then I noticed this very nice move, which is rook d2. And black is better because there's a threat of knight g3 and of course now I'm also threatening to take. If white plays rook e1 I can just trade one pair of rooks and then take on g7 and I'm also winning. So unfortunately he didn't play this. It was a nice little trap I set up there. But he played rook e3 which is the best move. But I saw this and what I liked here is that I can now force a rook end game that's just better for me where I can press and I don't have any risk really. Knight g3 is a cute little move. He has to go king e1 if he takes. His pawn structure is spoiled here and he has also a very tough rook in game, probably losing. He can't go to g1 because of knight e2. So he has to go here and now I go knight f5. And attacking this one, so he goes king d2 and now we reach this rook in game where white has three isolated pawns. In general in chess you want to keep your pawns together, you want to have as little pawn islands as possible. So this means all these pawns are weak, they cannot protect each other and I can attack them. All right, so here I played rook e4. The pawn is just to come across here, um, play the rook to a4. I didn't want to go to e5 because now I can play rook f1 check followed by rook f4 and then go a4 and I didn't like this. So I played rook e4, he played rook f1 check anyway, I played king e6 and here was kind of a, not really a bluff, but I couldn't really, I couldn't really 
con conclude that the opponent game of the Rook F4 was winning for me. But it is actually, it seems to be winning. But I thought, okay, if he wants to go for it, he has two minutes. I don't think he will take the risk to play Rook F4 and he didn't. And it is actually winning for me. Okay, we're not gonna go into this right now. It would take too long, but black is winning here. I think king d5 or b5, doesn't matter, and so on. You can analyze it for yourself if you want to. Um, but he played differently, king d3, rook a4, rook f2, and that, that's exactly the position I want to have, because now his rook is passive, my rook is perfect, active, controlling, and I can now improve my position. And here I quite like my move, h5, because I'm gaining space, I'm stopping him from going g4, which would be his next move, I think. Uh, or e4, but h5 I liked. Now you went e4. And now I thought, okay, I can grab even more space, go h4, but actually this move might not be the best one. I can also push the pawns here, go c5. Uh, okay, that's a different story, okay? But I ha didn't have that much time on the clock, so I play h4. And if he doesn't do anything, I will just play g5. Actually, not sure if I play g5, but I push my pawns and go rook a3 and then he will have problems. The problems will come, so you can't just sit and wait to see what I do. So he played rook f4, which I think was a good practical choice, taking on a2. And now not taking here, because I take here, I'm just a pawn up and it's a strong pawn, pass pawn, but rook g4 is nice, uh, hitting this pawn. And now I play king f6 and he just gives, keeps on checking me and he's really just harassing me. And what I found really nice here, if I can give a little praise to myself, is that I found a way to reach a time control, um, which was like six moves away or so without changing position in any way because I just kept moving my king. So I have to get it together again now. I play king e6 here again, okay, rook g4. Now I play king f7, rook f4 check, king e7, rook g4. So we, you see we do a nice little dance, black, my white cannot do anything else really, I think, useful at least. I don't know if he could go some other move, but he was also in time travel, so he didn't bother. Maybe he could play something like e5 or king d4, actually, the more I look at it. Uh, <laughs> but he didn't. So he played this, this, this. And now we had reached a time control, and now I could think about it. But I had to make sure to not go here, because that would be a three times repetition. That's what you don't want. So I went here. And also, by the way, during the game in time travel, I thought about king g8, right, to escape the checks. But fortunately, I waited to do that until I had reached time control, because here I realized, oh, after e5, I might have a problem, because this pawn is freaking strong. So it's good that I didn't do this. So king e7, rook g4, king f6, so that's the only way to play. I need to give up this pawn g7 and hope I can do something with my past pawn, a5. So he took. Now I go a4, also thought about c5, but just didn't feel right and the computer confirms it. Should be a draw here. Actually also in the game it should be a draw, but I think a4 is posing more problems. So he took on c7, I took on g2, and now he played um, rook e7 check, which is a good move, because my king is very well placed on e5, and I went king f4, Gotta go active. And here it just gets really messy and complicated. I can't go into all the lines possibly. Uh, so let's see what he played. Rook e6, he really surprised me with this move. I looked at e5 mainly and I expected this. And um, I, I think I want to go rook g5 here. To force him to go e6. And now go king g3, something like that. Oh, actually, he doesn't have to go e6. He can also go king d4. Yeah. And now, what did I want to do? Still king g3, maybe? It's all just a complete mess, obviously, and it, it should be a draw. Um, but, okay, in a practical game, very difficult. By the way, if rook f7 check, I'll keep moving. King g3. And one important point here is that this end game is clearly better. Here, it took me a little bit to figure out, but I don't push this pawn, I push this pawn first. And now white has to push, because if the king approaches, then I will check. And now I push this one, and I queen with check, and stop the pawn, okay? So that's, that's a nice little trick there, which I know out of studies, to, to push one pawn first, to then uh, uh, queen with check. 
he, of course, he can also push his pawn, but the difference is that instead of queening this one, I have queened this one, which means that in the queen end game, I have the king already close to the pawn. I, I think I have very good practical winning chances here. All right, back to the game. He played differently. Rook e6. And here computer says that rook g3 would be a best man just taking the pawn. But I, I like my move. It might be a draw, but it's also posing white. Uh, big difficulties. Rook b2. Now, I have this threat of just pushing the pawn, possibly, right? So he played rook f6 check, and I go forward, king g3, and I think here he stepped wrong. He should probably go rook f1, which is very precise, to stop me from going rook b1 and make it more difficult for me to go get behind the pawn. And then maybe take e5, rook b5, Rook e1, something along this nature, I don't know. It all still looks quite dangerous for white, but maybe a computer can hold it. Um, but he played, he played e5 immediately. And now I played rook b1 to get behind the pawn, okay? Um, and also a threat in a3, a2. That's another threat. So you play king c2. He played king c2. The alternative would be to go e6, but then I go rook e1. Okay. And of course white can do this, but I think he's just going to lose here, as I have this pawn, obviously. And he, if he can get rid of this pawn, okay, great. Then he could just give the rook for the pawn, should probably be a draw. But to get rid of this pawn will be very difficult. Actually, Maybe it would be more precise to play rook a7 here, also with the threat of pushing this pawn, then taking next time. This pawn is not going anywhere. So, let's see the game. He played king c2, and now I go rook b5, which I think is a nice little precise move. If I go rook e1, he takes on b6, and he goes rook a6. Maybe there's also winning, I don't know, but. Um, I didn't want to find out, okay? I thought the other one was better. Because here, we're trading the pawns on my terms, kind of, okay? Um, he played e6, rook e5, okay, now he didn't play e7, but if he was to play e7, then it's a better version for me, because I can, again, go rook a7, stop him from going rook a6, or also, yeah. This is probably winning for black, I think. So he didn't play e6, probably realizing that this is lost. And he played, he played king b2. And I went b5. King a3. Now I took. And he played king b4. If he goes like rook g6, he will be also in kind of zugzwang, I think. And I can just improve and it will be, it will be lost sooner or later, I'm pretty sure. So he went, oh no, he didn't go king b4. Actually then I'll just go king g4, king g5. And also this is going to lose some way or the other. So he played c4. B takes c4, king takes a4. And now I just come back, king g4, king b4. And I don't care about this pawn. I care about getting rid of this one. So I go king g5, he went rook f3. Now I take, we have this position on the board. And his king is just too far away. And many ways of winning, but I played rook h6, after which he resigned immediately because I'm threatening to go h3, h2. So rook f1 would make sense, right? But just h3. Okay, you can bring the king. h2, you have to stop it. And now just king f4, king g3, king f1. And you can choose any move, king f3, rook over, whatever. Just wins because, well, what is too passive? Uh, it's just losing, yeah. So he resigned in this position and I took the pawn. We lost the match, unfortunately, even though it was close, three and a half to four and a half. But for me personally, of course, a very nice win against a strong player uh, with the black pieces, grinding out a win here in the end game, and was very happy about my play here. So I hope you guys enjoyed the analysis and make sure if you are not yet subscribed, then 
please do so. Not please, just do so, so you are informed when I publish videos like this one, okay? Awesome, you see my thumb, you see my face? <laughs> okay, see you guys, bye.